away, you can already feel the atmosphere here is going to be very similar to what it was a few weeks ago in the Florida game. And Tennessee on offense first will have to deal with that crowd noise on the opening possession of the game. Jamie Christensen kicked off last year. He's also the field goal this year for the first time. The hero of last week's win at Ole Miss. Lucas Taylor, the true freshman. A yard back in the end zone, brings it out to the 10, and is nailed. Great start from Alabama. I formation again. We expect them to run the ball more today out of the eye than they have in the last couple of weeks, and this time Riggs is out to the 18-yard line defensively for Alabama. On third down, it's Riggs. Darts to his right across the 20, first and 10, Tennessee. Third and nine rather than third and four. Changes things considerably. Here comes the blitz. Crossing. In trouble. Gets rid of it. Corey Anderson, the fullback. He is a load at 270 pounds, but he is caught a yard short at the 30-yard line. He said we ran 63 offensive plays. 54 of them were effective, but we killed ourselves with drop passes and penalties. Here's Britton Colton. The freshman, and this is not a terribly effective kick. D.J. Hall, though, he's struggling. Yeah. He, Colquitt is really struggling. He is. Healthy Brody Coyle has been brilliant. Yes. And I think we'll see a lot of early down passing from this team. Like this. Keith Brown has it. Stiff arm. He's caught and dropped at the 43-yard line. Let's check the offense for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Their front four, a lot of depth. They rotate a lot of guys through there. Here's uh, Coyle back. Keith Brown cuts underneath and grabs it for the first down. He fumbles the ball. Nope, they're going to rule that. Oh, it is a fumble. fumble. Yes, indeed. You see Tennessee, 98 points per game, 83rd overall in offense. Boston, interesting play, effective play. Hannon again goes right. He's a big guy, and he gets all the way to the 29. Fresh set of downs at the 28-yard line. Robert Meacham is to the near side. Two men wide right. Draw play. Riggs up the middle. Scoots inside the 20. This all began with a turnover. A fumble forced by Inky Johnson. First down and 10. Tossing back. Quick drop. And a nice catch at Jason Swain at the 9-yard line. Tossing with a play change. Out of the straight eye, it's Riggs. Dances and gets the first. Oh, my goodness. How about that? Six forty-five to go in the first quarter. Turnover is even one and one. And off to Darby. Comes right. Flag is down. That's going to be an interesting one to watch. I think Texas Tech playing a little bit better defense than they've played in the past. You know, they've always been able to throw and catch and score points. Injury marred career, but healthy this year. And it's Tim Castillo, the fullback, out near the 20. See if that's enough for the first down. Alabama gets its first first down. Coyle straight drop back, wings it left side, diving catch to 28. He is made by D.J. Hall. D.J. Hall injured his back or his ribs, one right. or the other, in that uh, game in the second quarter last week. Second down and three. McLean sets up to the left side. They draw it. Darby wiggles out to the 30. That might be enough for another first down as uh, Kevin Simon makes the tackle in the middle. Backs in the eye. They fake. Doyle gets a good block. Picks it back to McLean. And he's spilled at the 36-yard line by Kevin Simon, number two. Croyle off to a good start, four or five in this game. He'll give it again to Darby, and Darby plunges right. And again, that might be an effective enough play to move the chains south. Thomas Brown of Georgia came the closest. He had 94. So there's the quarterback sneak from Brody Croyle. And it looks like that's going to be enough for the first down. And I like Leach. He, he says, my idea of a balanced offense is this receiver gets so many balls, this back gets so many passes. <laughs> Coyle got a man at the 40. D.J. Hall. And they put it down in front of Jonathan Wade at the 39. And they struggled with five three-and-outs in that game. And 
As if on cue, the sunlight comes out and D.J. Hall makes the catch. At the 33. They're just kind of dinking them a little bit here. This would be a career best of 50 for the hero of last week's win over Ole Miss. He was bombing them in pregame. Good snap. Kick on the way. Nope. Wide left. D.J. Hall, who uh, is the punt returner now with the absence of Tyrone Prothrow. Nice and high, this one. D.J. Hall grabs it, follows it, muffs it, and picks it up. Glenn Coffey, the true rookie, uh, the ter true freshman, that is, is the running back now, giving Darby a blow. And he gets the handoff. Comes left, stiff arm. Oh, ankle tackle. Blitz from the corner. Good blitz pickup. Nice pass out to the 47-yard line. Keep going to the 50. And that's the difference between throwing that hard inside slant in front of the receiver and throwing it behind. A glorious. I don't know if that's appropriate. Word. I'm taking your word for it. I don't think it is. Royal. Uh... Oh, wow, what a pass. What a nifty throw. D.J. Hall. 6'3", 190-pound sophomore, and his counterpart on the other side, Keith Brown, 6'3", 192. They're both large, and they're both fast. Reverse, Keith Brown. Here's one of the fast ones. He's also elusive, and he turns the corner and gets out of bounds inside the 30. Out of bounds. Needs to restuff the hanky. They'll go for it on fourth down. Kenneth Darby in the backfield. They'll throw it. Ball, ball. Drill it. Incomplete. Goes over on downs, intended for Matt Goodell. Rick Lawson back at quarterback, and Arian Foster has replaced Gerald Riggs at running back. This is Foster number 27, and a nice piece of running out near the 37-yard line. And Foster remains in the backfield behind Corey Anderson, gets the handoff, gets a block from the right side, and he's got a first down plus out to the 45, 46-yard line. 9.40 to go, first half. It's a play fake. Clawson under pressure. Throws it out. Oh, what a throw. What a throw under pressure. Chris Brown, the tight end. Reverse. Oh, well played by Gilberry. He was right there on the bootleg, but he didn't make the play. This time he stayed at home and was right there on the reverse and made the play behind the line of scrimmage. That one will head over Hall's head. Oh, my goodness. They didn't know where the ball was. They were there. I think that was uh, Chris Hannon was down there. Was last intercepted in the opening game of the season. Second down. And off. Darby comes left. Got a big hole. Wow, what a hole. Antoine Caldwell was out there to block, but there was nobody yeah, there. They really caught Tennessee in a mistake there defensively. They'll load it up with three wides to the left side. And out of the sprint, here's Coyle, buried, fourth down. This is another area of special teams play that uh, has bothered Tennessee this year. There's shots, not a particularly effective punt. Taylor spins out of a tackle. Spins out of another, looks for blocking help, has some. And nice Taylor... Return. Terrific effort. Second down, 10. Faiton starts in motion. Clawson hands it off to Foster. And Foster comes right. Gang tackle. Good It'll run. set up a big third down. Four men down for Alabama. They bring only the four. Clawson gets good to blocking. And it's incomplete. Intended for Brett Smith, number nine. On first down, play fake. Boyle looking left for Keith Brown. He's open. Got the first down and skips out of bounds at the 45-yard line. You can see they've only had to punt once. They did miss a field goal earlier. And here's Coyle back to throw. Blitz coming. He fires it out. It's caught by D.J. Hall. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Two wides to the left. Here's Coyle. Straight drop. Brings it this near side, and that's complete again.
Doyle, 11 of 18, and again, it's an eye formation movement. Well, that's a costly penalty against Alabama. I think the right guard moved early, and instead of third and two, it's going to be third and seven. Absolutely. It now becomes a 49-yard effort if you don't gain anything on this third down. Here's Coyle with the pressure, and it becomes a moot point because he is sacked out of field goal range. Interesting how these well, things filter through. Yeah. They just wanted to take as much time off as they could before they punted the football. Shots. Nobody back. And they went after that kick. And it's going to be down inside the five. And again, you see the field position, all right? You know, sometimes there are moments in my career that I don't stand with great dignity. No. But one does what one is asked to do. You bite the bullet, so to speak. Yes. You have to. <laughs> uh, makes you proud. We are number one. That's the end of the first half. Zip, zip. Alabama gets the first chance to make something happen. Coyle hands it off to Darby. Antoine Caldwell pulls left. They ran this play in the first half. Yeah. He didn't have anybody to block. This time, he is a snowplow. For the third time in the ball game. Lucas Taylor will let it bounce, and it takes an Alabama roll. Comes to rest just at the 15-yard line. No return on the punt. Second down and 10. Boston quick setup. Brings it to the near side. Robert Meacham makes his first catch of the ball game. And it gives us a chance to head back to New York. And check in once again with Tim. There are flags. Part of the snap, outside on the defense. The defender got into the zone, causing a false start. Therefore, okay. the penalty is on the defense. Play clock running down on Rick Lawson. He might have to burn a timeout here. He That's just terrible. does get it, but Arian Foster breaks loose wow and what picked happened? up the first down they had him buried behind the line foster remains at the running back behind david holbert number 30. so a couple of youngsters in the backfield it's foster and uh, he works he's out grinding. Right near the you, he's he grinding. sure is he's averaging over five yards a carry Boston screen pass and he gets loose. It's Riggs. I think he stepped out of bounds short of the first down marker. Ryan West is the snapper. Here's Colquitt's kick. And the gunner is down, and D.J. Hall on the short punt. Oh Fumbles the ball. My gracious. It's still bobbling around in there. Alabama very fortunate to get it back. D.J. Hall has fumbled two punts today. They had a fumble inside the 10 early, early in the ball game. Here's shots. Good one. Boomer. Excellent. At the 40, Lucas Taylor. Flags are down. So is Lucas Taylor. During the return, there are two fouls. Holding number 26. That penalty is declined. Illegal block at the back. Number six, 10 yard penalty. First down. My goodness. And a new punt returner now, Brandon Brooks, who stands all of five foot five. And they've uncovered the outside receiver. They're going after this one. He wears number five, and this is a booming punt. And it takes a uh, backward bounce. Looks like a nine iron. Excellent work by Tennessee on no the punt team. Might see a screen in this possession if they get a first down out of this territory. Here's Coyle back. Gets a good pass protection. Here's D.J. Hall. And he's got a first down. That's a nice first down play for Alabama. Third down. Here's Coyle. Now he's fourth down. Third down. It's too tough against this defense. First and second down. They can make a big pass play. Third down. They can't protect Brody Coyle against this front. Posted at the 38-yard line. 
This one high, but relatively short. And a fair catch called by Ivy. Yes, he did. Oh, he definitely did. Yes, he did. The Miko Lions, he right went, there. He went down to the ground, but I don't think he ever had the football. They've got to throw on first and second down. They, they, they can't have third and six or seven or more than that against this defense. Draw play. Darby gets a great block in the corner, then a stiff arm. He's at the 40, a yard short of the first down. And an Alabama player down. It's Keith Brown. Oh boy. Now he's up. No. Now he's limping. High formation again. Two wide receivers left. And Coyle drills it. Caught at the 16-yard line. That's D.J. Hall who's having a big, big day. They're down to five seconds five on the seconds. play clock. They've yep. already wasted one timeout. You don't want to waste another one here. There's the snap into the wind. The kick is up. Jamie Christensen breaks the scoreless tie. 33 yards out. Jamie Christensen just broke the scoreless tie. He kicks off. Lucas Taylor moves up to grab this one at the five. To the 15. Oh, boy. That speed. Does he ever? And he's all the way out to the 46 for him. Line. Good for him. Rick Lawson continues at quarterback. Lawson to throw. He's going deep for Jason Swain. Man coverage. Flag down. Oh, what a catch. And Swain has the grab. And that shows you the strength of Jason Swain. The score is tied at three, and a little chest bump for a kicker. I was on the cover after we beat Nebraska and were undefeated. We had a week off, and then we came down to Legion Field in Birmingham and got whacked by Alabama. So I'm part of that jinx lore. Coyle nailed for a loss back at the 25-yard line. Keith Brown is back on the field, injured earlier in the quarter. Oh, boy, oh, wow. Jailbreak. I mean, they cannot block them. On third down, out of the shotgun, they can't block. And fourth and 24. Jeremy Schatz. Lucas Taylor moves up to grab it at the 43-yard line. Nice tackle. But we are a team with a lot of pride, and we can still have a really good season. They're trying to get the lead now in a 3-3 game. Here's Clawson. And it's delivered on a rope as we go down to Tracy Wolfson. Pitch, Foster, chased by Jawan Simpson, who misses the tackle, and the knee is down at the 29-yard line. Foster hesitated, got out of the tackle of Gilberry, and apparently got the first down. Let's check this spot. Lawson. Riggs. Out of the tackle. To the five. First and goal. Volunteers. Foster in the backfield on first and goal in a tie game 3-3. Penalty flag. Another costly movement penalty is going to knock him back five yards outside of that Five-yard line. Lawson rolling to his right. Pulls up and throws it away. And the good thing for that for Alabama is it stops the clock. Illegal forward pass on the offense. Oh, across the line. Pass was beyond the line of scrimmage. Okay. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Lost it down. Lawson, screen pass, right side. Bubble in the end zone, through the end zone. Oh my goodness gracious. He might have scored a touchdown. Touchback. Instead, Alabama stops him. Touchback. Unbelievable. He goes deep left side, man coverage, D.J. Hall, he's out there. He got it! The one time they gave Brody protection, he comes through with a big-time throw to D.J. Hall. 
You want to gain yardage, and you want to use clock here if you're Alabama. Second you down and six. Darby gets it. Darby sprints down to the 25. May have been his best run of the day. First and 10 from the 25. Darby comes right, shakes the tackle, turns the corner, out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Tennessee cannot stop the clock again. They're setting up the game-winning field goal right in the middle of the field. And Brody Coyle goes right to the midway point. Drew Lane, a senior, will snap it. Matt Miller, a senior, will hold it. Jamie Christensen will kick it. For the lead. And this kick right here important. Lucas Taylor returned the last one out to the 50-yard line. They've got to cover this kick effectively. Christensen, it will be taken by Taylor. Three yards deep to the 10. And cut down at the 22. There were two fouls on the play. Listen to this place. Ainge deep. Rainbow pass. D'Amico Lyons intercepts. Perfect ending. Absolutely picture perfect ending. The All American, academic and physical All American with the interception.